in. Uh, one person wrote in to me directly to say that they use their lockdown to start doing push-ups. Oh. They couldn't couldn't do any. Now they're they're doing 50 to 10,000 a day, aiming for chin-ups next time. What, what about you? What was your lockdown um, passion? And I just became a couch, really. <laughs> I ate a lot on the couch and I've caught up on Breaking Bad. That's what I did. Yeah. Well, uh, another person tweeted in saying they couldn't stand any more Zoom or team meetings and say so they started uh, painting. Oh. So uh, lots of things to do. Yep. A lot of people started baking. Yep. Mary Grace Quigley also started making her own bread at the beginning of the pandemic and she's now sharing her tips and tricks on social media and she joins us now from her own kitchen in Adelaide. Good morning to you. Uh, you've got some good bread there. Is that fresh? Hello. Yes, it is. I just baked, I got it up really early just to bake these loaves so that I could show you my lovely fresh loaves. This was one from yesterday, but these two I baked this morning. Now, it's all, Mary, it's always been, um, you know, perceived that making or baking bread is a very difficult thing to actually do. You know, you need to knead and knead it a long time. You need to have your own starter as well. But you found a simple way of doing this. Yeah, exactly. I was very apprehensive about starting to bake. I was like, I'll never be able to do it. My bread's going to be flat. Um, and yeah, I've been baking for about 18 months or so now and throughout the process I've just found more and more ways to make it more simple. Um, and I guess the simplest way that I've found is that you can actually just mix the dough together at night um, and then you just leave it on the counter and then you bake it in the morning and you end up with bread like this and you don't have to like babysit it and be there all day mm. looking after the bread. So just tell me about the timeline breakdown. I don't bake at all. I, I make money and I use that <laughs> dough to buy bread. Um, how long does it normally take to make a sourdough from scratch? And, and in comparison, how short is your version? <laughs> well, it's not so much the time that the time itself that it takes is different. I guess it's more that it's your time <laughs> that you don't have to spend with the bread. So a lot of recipes, it's like you have to be there and you have your dough and you have to fold it every hour. Yeah. So if you go out, you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen to the bread? <laughs> um, and this, what I call backwards bread method is that you just mix it together. You do one fold up like 20 minutes and then you can go to bed. So I feel like it doesn't count as time, but it's still like eight hours, but you're asleep or you could be at work. And then you come home, you shape it and you can mm. bake it. Yeah, I've, I've had friends who've, you know, started baking their own bread and everything. It's all about the starter and it's almost, you know, they get up in the middle of the night to deal with their starter and then they can't <laughs> yeah. go out because they have to deal with their starter. It's I like bottle feeding <laughs> a starter. But this just yeah. takes all that out of, um, out of making bread. Yeah, totally. So I've definitely also like brought bread to parties. I've brought bread mm. like like dough, not finished bread, but like a dough that I started at the wrong time when I first started baking. I was like, <laughs> no, I have to take it with me. And I literally would have like a Tupperware container with dough in my handbag. So I was like, <laughs> I can't leave it. But it's like, that's all gone out the window now. And I'm like, no, it's going to be fine. Um, if you are at home, then that's really nice. And you can do the folks. I, I brought some go with me or to my kitchen with me um so this is what it looks like in the morning mm. after you've mixed it together at night so at night it's kind of smaller and then you'll see in the morning it gets kind of big and then yeah. um you can fold it and this is like a fun part of the process but like you, you don't have to do it but it is kind of the best part but okay. this is a fold is just doing this with the dough you just go Flop, flop, and that's it. And, and can you add other stuff to it? You know, I love raisin bread, so can you add yes. nuts and raisins and whatever you, you want to it? You can add anything you like to it. Um, I have these, I've been making these sprouts, so they're um, from wheat. You could sprout, like, lentils. You could sprout literally anything that, like, mm. is a seed that mm. can sprout. You can sprout and you can put that in bread. You can make raisin bread. You can... Olive bread is very popular. <laughs> Lots of people like the olive bread. Mm. Um, anything you want. And with this method, you just add it in the morning. So you don't have to add it before. You can if you want, actually. You can do it either way. But so I found lots of recipes where like, you must add now. it two this hours after. started <laughs> as a small little project, something you wanted to do. Are you now 
a baker for life? Is this your, <laughs> your source well, of dough? Well, it's not my... It's no, not quite. A little bit. Um, I've made a book about bread, um, and so that's helped me to kind of fund making more content on Instagram, making more bread, but the bread itself, I don't sell at the moment. I hope, hope one day I can open a bakery, um, but at the moment I can only bake four loaves at once. Mm. Um, and in the home oven, I can only bake two. <laughs> um, so it takes a really long time to do like 10 or 12 loaves. Um, yes. I work as an English teacher. <laughs> That's my real job, which I think helps with like, the bread stuff because I always think when I teach English to people as a second language, how can you explain things simply? How can mm. you simplify things that are complicated and mm. talk about them in a way that's easy to understand? Mm. So. That's Mary, what I do with the bread as well. Mary Grace Quigley, thank you so much for showing us your tips and inspiring us to keep in touch with our lockdown passions and who knows where it'll take us. Thank you and have a happy new year. <laughs> you too. Thank you so much. Hey, Tom, you're a low-carb guy. That looks pretty good though, right? Oh, it looks so good. And I agree with adding things like raisins yeah. and, and lentils. Sounds yeah. pretty good to me. Yeah. What's happening on the sports front? Well, there is some developing news in England's cricket coach,